And the reason why our church has a huge emphasis on testimonies is there's a couple of a uh, few reasons. One is to glorify God. Okay, because a lot of times in this world and day and age, we see God as religious. He's boring. He's dead. He's not moving. He's just whatever. But I want to let you know is that God is alive and you're going to about to hear that he is alive and moving in people's situations. Okay, and God is going to get the glory in just a few seconds. And two, it is to defeat Satan. Because you know what happens is that you even believe at times, I even believe at times, is that, you know what, Satan is bigger than God. He's stronger, more powerful, more darkness than light. But I want to let you know that God already defeated him. And that was on the cross. And because of the cross, these girls that are about to share a testimony took that into their possession. And now they're walking with freedom. Amen? And third, it is to encourage your faith. You know, we are humans each one of us, and the one thing that happens is that we speculate, we doubt, we, you know, we question things, we're like, I don't think this is true, and you have every right, but when you hear a testimony, a story, your friend, a neighbor, someone that's actually present, it does something to you, hasn't it? And the fourth reason is because you're next. Testimonies happen is because the next testimony is going to happen. I want to let you know, my personally, I received testimonies. I mean, excuse me, my own personal testimonies because I heard that somebody in my situation, as bad as it was, I got a chance to believe. I got a chance to believe in, you know what? It's not over for me. Even though my situation is hopeless, I feel like it's the end. I, it always seems like I have nothing. I have no favor. It seems like everything is negative in my life. But when I hear testimony, I'm like, you know what? If God can do it for them, God can do it for me. Come on. And so today, you're going to be highly encouraged by these wonderful testimonies. And before I call one of them in, I just want you guys to give them a round of applause. It takes a huge, huge, bold step to share their personal heart. Amen? So if I can have the first testimony come on up and give, them an, uh, give her another hand of applause. Before she shares, you guys, I want to tell you that it, she was so bold to do this. I mean, this is huge. She was so, she's shaking. But you know what? She was led to do this because she wanted to touch people. She said that if God could do it for me, I, God can do it for anybody. Come on. So um, let's just begin with starting with your name and where you're from. Um, Rochelle, and I'm from Tri-Cities. Born and raised. <laughs> Ooh, Tri-Cities. Okay. Um, um, now, can you tell us what the problem you're having and facing and the testimony that you have for us? Um, I have dealt with depression for the last year um, and severe neck pain um, probably for the last 11 years. Um, and the pain led to the depression um, and just got deeper and deeper. And uh, through doctor appointments, um, they started prescribing pain medication. And... Um, it took the pain away, but it also um, made me numb. And um, it, I really liked that. <laughs> um, so I continued taking them and then upping them and then um, just taking way too many. And um, I was on, actually in June, um, I, and this is something I didn't um, share with anybody, not even my own husband. I mean, I took them uh, in secret and um, just got worse and worse. And in June, um, I was in the Taco Bell parking lot and took a bunch, and my friends didn't know. And we had had a couple, couple beers at the bar. And I, don't, I, I wasn't trying to die. Um, that wasn't my intention. I was just chasing that numb feeling. And um, I stopped breathing, passed out, and a police officer happened to be just driving by and um, my friends thought I was being silly. Um, they didn't know what I was doing <laughs> laying there in the parking lot of Taco Bell. <laughs> um, and so the cop came, and I wasn't breathing. Um, they tubed me in the parking lot and took me into uh, ER. And I stayed there on a ventilator for a few days. Um, and when I came out of it, I was so humiliated. And because I didn't share it with anybody, um, I was kind of alone and didn't want to um, tell them what I did. Um, and that uh, the feelings of guilt and shame led to more pain pills. You think it would have been a wake-up call, but um, it just wasn't. <laughs> uh, 
I um, really started getting into really heavy um, medications. And then I saw um, a, on Facebook, yeah, um, someone had liked a video that Vladimir did. And um, so I watched it and I was just like blown away um, and started kind of like obsessively um, watching YouTube. I'm like, and um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Uh, and so I went and um, just fell in love. And this place is powerful. Come on. Um, and pastor was praying or having us pray for perspective. And I was still taking the pills, by the way. I was here, took them in the parking lot and came in. Uh, so weird. Um, and so I'm praying for perspective. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So um, repeating after the pastor, right? Um, and over the course of time, I had been warned by the doctors. They could see I was taking a lot. And they said, you know, you're going to be kicked off the program. You need to slow down. You're doing too much. I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. So... Um, that Thursday, after I prayed for perspective, um, that Thursday, they kicked me off the program. <laughs> and I was just, um, I was mad. I was shocked. And I sat in my car in the Target parking lot, and um, it was just like, okay, this is your perspective. You need to turn this around. Um, and I got the perspective that I prayed for. <laughs> um, yeah, I just... And now, once you got the perspective, you had a choice, you were mentioning, that either to go towards getting more drugs and prescription. What, what did you choose? Oh, man. Um, I chose to stop. Uh, I stopped everything. Um, I watched, I had my earplugs in and just pressed in to God. I said, I, you know, I'm not strong right now, but God is. And um, just kept plugging it. Emmanuel TV, I downloaded the app because you, you guys talk about it. I'm like, who's TV Joshua? I never heard of him. Um, so I started listening um, to it constantly um, and just found so much peace there. And, um, you know, I just it was being attacked. And um, the home groups, it's funny. Uh, gosh, God is like so good. <laughs> I'm such, I can be such an idiot sometimes. So I was sitting in the pew and um, Anna actually came up to me and introduced herself and um, invited me to home group. And in my head, I'm going, oh yeah, no, that's not going to happen because I'm like super awkward. I don't do this, you know, thing with people. Uh, um, so I planned on not coming and then she got my number and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just, I can text her some excuse. Like I really planned on not going. And then um, Vladimir walked up the aisle and was like, hey, Rochelle, right? And I'm like, yeah. And I really, really respect him. So it was kind of like, okay, well, he remembered my name. That's cool, you know? And, um, and then I go, oh, geez. Cause he said, you're going to be at home group tonight, right? You're going to make it to home group. And I go, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, man, if I don't go, he's going to remember that my name, but that I didn't go. And so like, I was like, okay, well, now I'll go. <laughs> Um, and I, th I mean, I was cussing all the way up the stairs <laughs> and I even told them, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> like, I, just, I don't do this. Um, but God knew that I needed these girls. Amen. So. Amen. And Rochelle, now that people listened and heard your powerful testimony, those that are here tonight or those that are watching, what would you advise them that are maybe in your situation or in a really dark place right now? What would you advise them? Um, just cling on to God for dear life. He'll find a way. I didn't know the answer, but he did. <laughs> and just in little confirmations. And um, it was it, now they look back, I just laugh because <laughs> it's just he just whacked me over the head. You know, it's like, it's like I didn't stand a chance or the enemy didn't stand a chance. Um, but, yeah. That's awesome. Give her a round of applause, you guys. And then thank you, Rochelle. People like that, where you hear that, it just uplifts your faith and encouragement and just believing that, you know what? God can do something for me, that God still lives and he breathes. Amen.
And before I go with the next uh, testimony, I just want to share about a testimony that I heard in Scowen, Synagogue Church of All Nations. And maybe some of you guys can relate or know someone that can relate. This lady went to this church in Nigeria, and it's a very, very powerful church. God is literally there. And those that don't know about it, please watch it at manual.tv. It is amazing. It will be introduced to a new level of faith. And... Anyways, this lady came to this church, and she began to share her testimonies that she had this life of limitation, poverty. She was just poor to the point of tears, stating that she couldn't even afford school for her children. She couldn't even afford a car payment. And she had to borrow money coming to the Synagogue Church of All Nations because word got out saying that God is there. And so she's like, I need to go. I'm desperate. I'm literally poverty stricken. I, I came and, you know, afford my children to go to school what's going to happen next? It was just getting worse and worse and worse. So she goes, and Prophet T.B. Joshua, which is this pastor of this church, gives her this anointing water, and you're going to hear a live testimony in just a second about the anointing water here, and gives it to her. It's anointed. Yes, it is just tap water, but God can use any medium to express himself because you know what? He's God. Okay, because he's God and he says, you know what, I want this anointing to spread out all across the world. And so he did that and so gave her the anointing water. And guess what happened? She began to just spray the anointing water into her household and the financial breakthrough came. She, uh, that year, she got a chance to have two 2011 cars where they're like brand new. And that house that she was trying to sell, she was in a situation with the house. And it was just really bad. She couldn't sell the house before she went to the church. Uh, synagogue Church of All Nations. And she couldn't sell it, so the bank told her she needs to reduce the price. And what happened was, when she came back, she started to pray for that house and spray the anointing water. Guess what? It got sold with the original price. Not the reduced price, but the original price. And then she got the two cars, and now she can you know, fund her kids to school. Literally breakthrough and a new level. Amen? God can do anything, and any way he wants to express himself, he will. Come on. And so, no further ado, I want our last testimony to come up. Go, you guys go ahead and give a round of applause. And can you just please begin with telling us your name and where you're from? My name is Elena Tenecliffe, and I'm from the Tri-Cities. And Elena, can you tell us what the problem you were having and the testimony that you have for us? Well, before I came to um, Good News, I felt... Um, a heavy emptiness and a void in my heart. And before I came here, I was actually not going to church at all and not praying at all. So that was one of the biggest changes for me. And as I started going to the home groups and we started reading the book um, from, bless or from Curses to Blessings, um, I got, uh, it, w it was revealed to me um, that a lot of people in my family have drinking problems and it's been from lots of generations back. And so I had, that was the biggest reason I decided to come to the prayer line. And for those that don't know what prayer line is, we hold that once a month, and people come all around the, uh, America to receive prayer due to whatever circumstances, and the uh, anointing water gets ministered to them. And can you please tell us, when you were here at the prayer line receiving, um, administ the anointing water was ministered to you, what happened? Um, well, um, when I first, you know, got the water sprayed on me, nothing was happening at first. Like, I didn't feel anything. Did you expect anything to happen? Not, not really. Well, I mean, I expected to get that curse taken away from me, and I expected, you know, that I'd walk out, you know, curse-free, but that was it. But, um, it was far from. <laughs> so, um, when it first got sprayed on me, it didn't really feel like anything, but uh, more and more times it was sprayed on me, it felt like all the nerves in my body were being electrocuted. So I don't really even know how to explain that. <laughs> so after that feeling came over, you don't remember what happened next? Mm -hmm. I do not. I, um, I remember it getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and then after that, I don't remember. And from what you heard or what you saw happen, because it was recorded, what happened? I got delivered from the demon pain and suffering, and yeah. <laughs> amen, amen, praise God. And so, amen. 
<laughs> Amen. That's amazing. And so can you tell us, now that you were delivered from the pain and suffering, how did that affect your life, that pain and suffering, and how are you now? Well, the pain and suffering that had the biggest effect on me was emotional pain. Um, in my recorded testimony, I talked a little bit about how my parents were really never around, specifically my mom. And so that pain, I, I mean, I still forgave her and many other people that had hurt me, but the pain had never left. And so that right there was the pain that left as well. Not just that pain, but physical pain as well. Wow. So you're saying that for that pain that you held on for so many years, after you received prayer here, it left you? Yes. Wow. Amen. You guys give her a round of applause. <laughs> and so those that you know, are watching here, and even those that are experiencing emotional pain, they're thinking, you know, it's just a thing I have to deal with. What would you advise them now that you experience freedom from that? What would you tell them? Um, pain isn't something we should have to deal with. Um, pain, sickness, those things, they're from the devil. You shouldn't have to go through pain and suffering and constantly worry about, oh, am I going to commit suicide today? Am I, you know, going to hurt myself today again? You shouldn't have to worry about that because that is from the devil. And you can receive healing from that. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Lena. I hope all of you that have been here and those that are watching have been encouraged and uplifted to believe for yourself. So whatever you're here tonight and experiencing that struggle, that battle, and maybe you have a doubt in your mind, I believe that seed was sown tonight for you because you know what? You are next to receive an amazing testimony. Amen?